And if you want to see a picture of the relics, I can screen share if you want. Yeah, and I'd love to uh, reference the study too. Like you could go into it or, or show people where you um, where you find the study because I've I've had similar experience. I've heard them. And it's mind blowing. And it reminds me of life and teachings of the masters of the far East. I don't know if you've ever read that, yes, but if read the book, yes. yes. And by, by Spalding and um, he's, that book is correct. Mm, wow. I've had a chance to ask Buddhist masters. Tell me about this book. Really? The, the, whatever is reported in Spalding's books, which was late 1800s. He was an engineer who went to Tibet and had the most marvelous lessons okay with and he, he he had a band of teachers he he went around the monasteries and records he records them as like a journal and then he came back and he published them through divorce divorce is a publisher that no longer exists in san diego but yeah i, I looked into these questions okay no that he's correct spalding's book is correct and deserves careful study even now even now which is now 2020, even more now, if you ask me, okay? So these things of Buddha's land are correct and they're real. They're not fantastical, they're not woo-woo, okay? This is real science. And in fact, I would say the more spiritual you become, the more scientific you are in your living. Mm. And would you say, uh, Yogananda as well, it would be. Yes, absolutely. And in fact, I've been to Yogananda's Babaji's cave in, um, in the foothills of the Himalayas. I went trekking there. So these things exist. They are really true and are there for us to, um, we're, we are beneficiaries of this knowledge. It's too bad that we cover it up with rationalities, you know. I was there. I was there too. And when I came across the relics of the Buddha, and I told you it was transformative, I was rearranged very deeply. So deeply, in fact, that to have the relics come to our home again and to do these experiments. And I think the masters probably knew <laughs> they 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 suss you out i think where your heart is where your intention is and to understand this is a very high level of science this isn't bottom up science where you get a bit of knowledge incremental then you build on it and you build on it we were given something from nature of a very high level it's top down science and i can tell you from what i could from all my reading Tiller's work confirmed the relics because when you have a box like a mouse, which is intelligent, and the Buddha's relics, it's like a device. This is an intention host device. The relics are a very high order device. You could call this the Model T. I call it the Model T, uh, the Ford car company. Tiller says, you know, don't worry about the device. It, it's just a repository. Don't, don't get tangled up with it. It measures this and it's this and and I write about it, you know the the device in some 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 detail, but not too much. He says the details are one thing. The the what the de, what the device is showing is that humans are capable of creating marvelous things, and they it does that through the space. Okay, and I'm leaving a little clue here, because when Tiller was doing his intention experiment. Yes, he looked at the target itself, but he also monitored the lab space itself. Where, Because when, when you do experiments which are really unusual and you look at thermodynamics, you want to look at the ambient conditions and also the target itself. It's just part of the protocol. And it's the space where he was monitoring it that was really doing unusual things. And I said, when I went into Guto, the monastery in northern Minneapolis, and I entered the door. I went, Oh, there's something very unusual here. Then I looked at the relics and I was blown away. Okay. <laughs> but but the, the space itself was already of a very different quality. Very different quality. Um, when the relics came to our home, let me give you an example that I think will help 
your listeners and viewers get a perspective. When the Buddha's relics came to our home uh, in Los Angeles, imagine for a moment a very high space like Westminster Abbey. The living room, within a few seconds, felt like you're sitting in Westminster Abbey, not, not like the living room. The space went magnitudes of a great cathedral. How is that? And this, you know, ordinary living room is where I have coffee. I read the Wall Street Journal. It's, but it was feeling like a high cathedral. And people who, who visited our home for three days when the, the tour was going on reported that that when they step into it, it's you're a different, the potential of that space supports every material thing in it. And that space is like a blueprint. The material thing in which is human bodies is different. You have things that will happen to the atoms and molecules that constitute the physical form. And when you are in that space, you have now the potential of a very different behavior, and which is what we observed, which is what we were seeing. People were healing. People had emotional upliftment. Um, I wrote in my paper, by the way, the people, your listeners and viewers can go at the end. We can go to my website address because the original Buddha relic paper is there, and it's free. Down, it's open access. I made that open access, so you have pictures, you have the actual data of Tiller's uh, or original experiments and what I did. I posited that when the relics come anywhere, these objects, these devices, condition the space. Mm. Condition the space. That word conditioning was coined by Tiller. That space really changes all materials. So if you go to a very conditioned, and, and one example in Canada, which I have visited, is the Basilica of St. Joseph on Mount Real. And the first Canadian saint is Ferry Andre, right? Brother Andre, you might not know him, but this, the largest basilica dedicated to St. Joseph is in Toronto. Hmm. Where are you, Matthew? I shouldn't have asked you that. I'm an hour outside of Toronto. Okay. So you have to send me. I'm going to go now for sure. You have to go there. It's a very highly conditioned space. And I would say, take your children, Iris. Absolutely. So what, what are the, what are the two places called again? Mount Royal. Okay. Mount Royal. And, and you know, the, the relic tour of the Buddha has been through Canada. I don't know exactly the mm. site, but it went to Edmonton and then it came down to Minneapolis. And that's where my friend from Edmonton says, you need to go here. And I thought, oh, I don't know about relics. I don't know. I, so, I don't know about relics. I, were I, you, I, yeah. yeah. At that time, were you more of your scientific mind at that time too? Yeah, not so. And it switched you. So it brought you over and, here. And I, the word, <laughs> I didn't even know the word relic, what that meant. But I told you, I had made an intention to seek the truth. And my, fa- mm. my friend in Edmonton said, her name is Patricia Mackay. And Patricia says, Nesha, I know you've read A Course in Miracles. We were students together. And she says, and you, you really love this whole spiritual side. But um, I think the relics are going to be a very important link for you. So I went. I, I didn't know what a relic was. I thought it was a, hey, it was free. <laughs> and I, it's a short drive up to Minneapolis from Rochester, Minnesota. Why not? So I was very curious. And that curiosity took me there. And boy, did it ever change my life. And then we hosted the relics at our home. That's like Buddha himself has come to your home, Matthew. I mean it. Okay. Well, you know, I, I absolutely hear what you're saying. Um, I've shared some stories in the podcast that people have picked up here and there, but I've had direct experiences like that, that I can't explain. And one of them was an actual person. So what you were talking about uh, makes me think like they say, you know, some legit yogis can give you a little boop in the head and, and kind of give you that experience. I think that uh, that's, okay. I think that that's possible. 
And I also think that some people take advantage of that. So you're trying to seek in it like a, you know, um, a chubby kid that just wants a chocolate bar. It's not like the right intentions, you know, it's like, it's got to be pure. But I think if you do it that way, it happens. But I'll just make a really long story short. I had a person in that I had met. He was really amazing. I actually write about him in the book uh, as an athlete, but he comes over to the house at my request because when he was speaking at this group setting, he was just dropping such amazing wisdom. You, you just knew he knew what was going on. He comes over to my house and I'm asking him deep questions about the world, right? And he's just giving me these extraordinary answers. And I go, uh-huh. how do you know this? Because you could tell he knew. I was like, how do you know this? He goes, well, um, I was always a curious person. Um, I read a lot of spiritual books in my life. And um, Mm -hmm. at one point I said, I have to know. So that year I read over 350 books, everything on spirituality, every religious book there was, I just sat and read all year. That didn't do it. So I said, I'm going to, he goes, I'm going to meditate for the rest of my life until I know. And he looks at me, he goes, you can't fake it. He's like, I was never going to come out of meditation until I knew. And I said, okay, what did you do? And he goes, I started meditating. I was like, well, how exactly? He goes, I meditated 20 hours a day, um, every single day, and, and slept for four hours. And I said, what did you eat? He goes, well, my brother would drop off food for me um, every couple of weeks, and I'd eat a little bit and, and go to sleep. And he goes, and I was like, okay. And he goes, it just so happens to be at about 100 days, I felt like I was getting electrocuted. And he goes, I didn't know if water was coming through on the floor and I was actually being electrocuted because I'd just been meditating. And I said, what did you meditate on? And he just said, one with God. And he goes, Mm -hmm. you know, he describes a similar experience. I've had a similar experience where it's kind of beyond words and it's, you know, there's no time, there's no space. It's it's really Mm -hmm. incredible. But here's the weird thing. He said some other stuff, um, but that was basically the story. As we were talking, I felt like I was floating out of my chair to the point where as I was listening to his story, I had unconsciously put my hands underneath my chair to prevent my body from floating up. And, I had, yeah. and then I'm listening to a story and then I realized what my hands were doing. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Why are my hands doing this? <laughs> and so I was like, huh? and, I, and, and he'd taken a pause and I said, okay, uh, his name was Tyrone. I said, Tyrone, I got to, you know, what a name for, for it too. It's so funny. I go, okay, Tyrone, I got to go to the washroom. So I go to the washroom and when I go to wash my hands, my face okay. is not my face. It's like still my face, but everything is distorted. And it's like not physical. It's just kind of moving around like a funhouse mirror. And I was completely sober. And I was just like, Oh my word. And I just look at it and I kind of giggle to myself because I knew something was happening and I go out and we finished the conversation. The really strange thing was two weeks prior to that, I had two of my best friends over to this place where I was, which was kind of remote as by myself. And we were just talking about all these spiritual concepts. I had that feeling right by myself. I started to float out of my body And I was thinking to myself, I'm a strange guy and I do strange things like meditation and things like this. I'm not going to tell my two buddies this because this is weird. I'm going to keep it to myself. Yes. Two minutes later, my friend goes, okay, is anybody else really? And he said, effed up. Is anybody else really effed up up right now? I look at him and then I look at my best friend who's also there and I know him pretty well. His face is beet red and he's got his hands on the table very, very securely. And I go, yeah, he's messed up. And we, we all had this same similar experience to what you're talking about. And we spent the night and the weekend, none of us had had that. And then I had it two weeks later. And so I only wanted to share that story briefly for the viewers to say, hey, you know, I know of other people who, who've had these experiences. I've had them. They're kind of unexplainable. And so what I wanted to give you as, as far as questions, because then you can continue any way you want and I'll sit here for 20 years. I'll do it in sat saying they call it like the hard sit. You got to sit, you sit that I'll sit here for as long as you'd like to speak. But my question is always the how, how can I get to that state and and maintain it? 
and live in compassion and, and peace and also service and, and have a really high degree of consciousness because it's not about remote viewing. So you have a skill and then you, you, you yeah. share on Instagram. Like that's not what this crap is for. You know what I mean? Nor in, nor the intention or law of attraction. It is about creating service through what you unique, uniquely want to offer. And that's a beautiful gift to the world. And the universe wants to respond to that. That's um, how I see it anyway. And so some of the questions that I had for you that you can touch on it if you wish is the law of attraction side is like, uh, you know, when you, when you're using your intention and it's not quite working because you, you, you haven't built up the belief, right? One of the teachings I heard is if you believe it a hundred percent, you doubt it a hundred percent, you get zero attraction. And Tyrone shared a, a story about him attracting an incredible story of attracting through doing nothing by applying that principle and also staying present. And so demonstrating that that principle did exist, like asking it is uh, given to you. Um, so how do I overcome the doubt, I guess, is the thing if I want to be of service. And then one of the big things that I'm struggling with, especially now in the world, is coming to grips with what I see as evil and know is evil. So um, I said at the beginning of the podcast, I knew uh, when I was younger, I didn't understand war and starvation. 9.1 million people die of starvation. I learn about these systems, these people with extraordinary power that do extraordinary evil things. They do exist. It's verifiable. You can follow it. You can know it. It, it definitely exists. And uh, human yeah. trafficking, that stuff exists. And propaganda and manipulation, that exists because I wanted to know about the systems. It, it just led to the systems that suppressed. And so if I'm viewing that and I'm watching people suffer, it's really hard for me and I want to help. Yeah. And, and now if I try to help people yell at me because they say it's misinformation and this, but they won't li listen to what I want to share. And originally, you know, if we flash back to February, we would have just been talking about this. How do we live extraordinary lives? But now we're, we're facing a bit of a adversary, a bit of a fear, a bit of, you know, all of this other, other thing and, it, and it's changed the dynamic. And so, for me, I'm, I'm personally struggling with how do I look at the evil stuff but want to make the positive difference? And so that's a whole bunch of stuff, and I'll let you tackle that how, how you wish. This, this is wonderful, uh, Matt. First of all, your friend Tyron. You see, um, spiritual knowledge is to be lived. It doesn't come from books. It's, it will be dead. So he made the extraordinary um, decision, intention to sit down and watch his mind. And by the way, to even say watch his mind is incorrect because your mind is not your mind. We think, oh, okay, let me put it this way. When you, when you woke up today, your heart is beating. You didn't say your heart beat, or, or the lungs to breathe and take in oxygen, it happens impersonally. The same, the mind is doing its thing. It's supposed to think. You cannot stop it, okay? So Tyrone has understood the silence that is always there because it's very powerful once you know that. You don't, you don't have to pay attention to the little radio in the corner playing its thing. And by the way, it's not your mind, your thoughts. We think of it, my mind, my thoughts, my private this and this. It's nonsense. Once you know that, you can be unattached. You are now free to choose. He was just choosing, okay? So he became a master of observation, of awareness, and this is not the same as mindfulness, by the way, okay? So that is supremely powerful. Once you know the context, the silence of your mind, that you're allowing, you have a different antenna, your bandwidth is different. You're not going, eh, 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 no, you're choosing a different bandwidth. That's all. By the way, Tiller refused to work with me unless I meditated daily. That was his condition. He first of all said, I don't have any funding for you. I said, I don't care. You know something that I really want to go there. And then he said, okay. But the second thing is, uh, I want you to meditate every day. Basically, he was saying, become aware of your inner chaos. And we're there right now. We are fearful and chaotic. Okay? 
your friend Tyrone, he can go into any situation, but he is self-managed, okay? And we're capable of that as human beings. By the way, any evil you see also, this is the lesson. Do not fight it. Do not resist it. Choose differently. And so I applaud you, Matthew, because even in this very strange, uncertain, upside down world, you're choosing to show up for the truth. You're choosing it. And life over and over again will show us. We don't know what happens tomorrow. Future is a figment of your imagination. It's not there. Okay, it's not real. What is real is right now. And you're choosing. And, and this is another example. I always think of Master Jesus. He chose every moment, okay? Uh, he wasn't resisting. He would simply say, oh, okay, it's like this in this temple, and uh, I'm going to choose this. I'm going to choose my Father's way. You could say Jesus was the most perfect man and student in that way, okay? He chose, and he chose right up to the end the Father's way. And so we can do that too. You don't have to go out and protest Black Lives Matter. It's important but you can be home and have self-preservation and protest that way. Do you understand? You don't have to get clubbed over your head about these things or paint graffiti over these things. No, you choose the truth. You choose it, and in that position, you're broadcasting it. Your intention is not contained in you. You are always, that is, let me put it this way way a field effect you radiate that okay so you are a person of the truth your position is being um, transmitted in that way just like buddha's relics are transmitting love right now to us it is not separate 2600 years ago his memory and he, what he stands for is very alive. The same way with Jesus, same way with Matthew. So you have to set that um, bar in yourself to be of love all the time so that there are no, no um, obstacles. So it's like one, one person once said to a teacher, if love is the answer, how can I get more love in my life? And the answer is you can't get love. You are the essence of love. Love is the essence of that which you are already. What you have to do is release the blocks to it. You release the, um, the beliefs and projections. And once you do that, you, it's like the clouds are covering up the sun. So you cannot get that. Okay, You, you don't reach or grasp for it, but you simply release the blocks of the, the the essence of Matthew and that is all heart and love because that's really what we are I hope that really gets us to a closer truth of what we are instead of grasping all the time and that's what Tyrone has done you know he's really understood his own nature by observation no violence no drugs no psychedelics nothing he simply sat down and so this is one big lesson for all of us just sit with yourself close your eyes and breathe the breath is the anchor and just watch everything that comes in i teach my patients this okay i teach them just to sit with that that um sit with their mind sit with even their fears because they have a lot of health things that are swirling and in the clinic i'm not doing clinic right now i'm doing virtual but when it is time we we just settle down for five minutes as we did before we got onto the podcast which is really beautiful you set the tone let's just set the intention to help everyone who tunes in today may we speak the truth Thy will be done, and we're there in the silence. And we can surrender, okay? We surrender the rest over.
So I'm not controlling or grasping. So I teach this to my patients and I teach them how to set an intention. The very basics of what is it that bothers you? What is the worst outcome? How would you turn it around? And so we say, I respectfully request, and then we write the sentence out. I respectfully request that this medicine have only the beneficial effects. Thy will be done. It comes with those simple things. And it's not simple. It's not simple. The simplest things are the most profound. You know? Beautiful. I absolutely agree. And I think it was well said. I could keep asking you questions all day. Um, I feel like we're just warming up, but I want to respect your time. So, what time is it, Matthew? It's uh, 17 after. Wow. So I think six for you, nine for me. It's, so I, don't know, I don't know what your schedule is, um, but what I'll open it up and say is, is there anything that you wish that we had talked about? Um, well, I want to say one thing, and that is I gave the clue that you can create with your intention, not only new life, new things, but you have to sharpen that intention just like Tyrone did. Mm. With meditation, understand yourself, understand your motivations because they're transient. You can, you can create and let go of things that do not serve you. If, if your mind is already quiet, you have to ask yourself, what am I doing to disturb the tranquility? And let that go, whether it's an addiction, habits, um, behaviors, you know yourself. Get to know yourself. It's a very profound thing to do. Uh, for me as a physician, it changed me because as a doctor, now I see people and, and there's a kind of, um, I know how it feels to feel in this body, the limitations, and yet their consciousness is unbounded, that they can really know the power. That doesn't mean the body is less real. The body is what the body, the biology needs that. I teach them energetic systems. I teach them how to set an intention and how to have a powerful prayer. All of those impact your well-being, okay? It's called doing all levels. That's what I call it. So, yes, I give them supplements in chemistry. I still do that. But I build these other aspects into their program, okay? So that they are ready. So they're able to be flexible in their own life. It's not just absence of disease or treating a, a, a label of arthritis, but that's how they first come to me. Okay, I understand that. The second thing I want uh, for people to take away is this aspect of space. That that space you create in your home has power that is like a blueprint. You create that space with your intention, it changes everything in that space. It's called space conditioning, and I go into that in some detail in the book. Okay, and so when the relics of the Buddha came to our home, within a few seconds, I knew Tiller's model is going to work. And, and we did, we proved it, that physics can actually quantify love thermodynamically. It's a source of energy beyond anything you could ever imagine. And we think in limited terms, like, you know, we have finite resources. I would say it's incorrect. It's incorrect. That's a lot to take in here, okay? I, I love it. I, I totally agree. And um, I'm so excited to dig into your book. I'll have to get you back on the show because I feel like we're just scratching the surface on... Scratching the surface, yeah. Yeah. For your listeners and for you too, Matthew, please go to nishamanikmd.com, N-I-S-H-A, Manik, M-A-N-E-K-M-D.com. In about the author, I do say, go to this website, go and get your paper, The Relics of the Buddha, this paper that actually I gave to His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, okay? I want your readers to go there and just sit with this paper. It has tremendous power to grasp these ideas because your consciousness expands. Absolutely. Your consciousness expands when you have high truths present it to you okay so that also is transformative i agree i t i totally agree it reminds me of um sometimes they say it's with geometry but even like looking at the relics or, or it's like your level of understanding it kind of just opens up little doors and and even if it doesn't hit you 
uh, like a sledgehammer to the face right away, it, it creates that space and a new thought. And if we can enter a new thought, um, we can have new ideas and we can change because what happens, what most people are living right now is, is, is a closed system of like a hamster wheel thought pattern loop. And so if you can veer off it for a second, that gives you space and that also gives you options, which essentially is freedom. And it's a... Oh, you touched on the biggest thing. So this t Tyrone has inner freedom. He has inner freedom, right? As I do, I, I mean, there, there's a freedom created by understanding these scientific validation of my spirit. I knew that all along, but you're right. Now I go, whoa, I see it. Now I'm more conscious about the clinic I create and how the information I share with my patients. And by the way, information is more fundamental than energy and matter. We think of matter, which is most tangible, which is very li little of the universe and nature. This is very small. Then you have energy, which changes matter. But the, the thing of information is what shapes energy, which shapes matter. Okay? Mm. So the most fundamental principle is information, what I just said. Information is so – and physics now agrees it's not energy is everything. Uh-uh. Information is everything everything that's the most important principle and fabric that constructs our universe and what what makes earth really special because this little blue dot is where information hides hmm. we're not on planet mars they're looking for water and inorganic material but the real thing that they should be looking for is does something create information and i explore these concepts in a very fun way in bridging science and spirit because you can create self-organizing matter all the time in the lab we do it but what is it to create information that grows that creates intelligent objects and that you know is creating art that endures and mona lisa and beethoven's symphony and a book that's different that's intelligence okay and that's information that will stand test of time amazing well we're, we're, we're saying so many things here i feel like <laughs> <laughs> so many good things well you know yeah an hour definitely wasn't enough uh with you but we'll we'll stay in touch and i'll happily get you back on the show i'm really excited to read your book but thank you for your work and your message and uh i look forward to staying in touch and, and definitely recommend people go to your website i'm gonna go check out the paper and you can see the relics too because i want to see those too well, the relics, um, I'm trying to think. I, the relics are not on my website, but they, there's a very, the, the Buddha relics paper has an incredible picture. And you know what? The journal said yes to printing it. Uh, it's a picture that I took of the space. Something very anomalous was happening. And again, the space is very crucial. That's why we create high cathedrals. And that's why you're going to go to St. Joseph's Basilica in Toronto when you're next there. By the way, St. Anne's Cathedral in Quebec City is also very conditioned. So you want to go to spaces because once you do a intention there, it will take shape. Those are very powerful spaces for healing, okay? Mm -hmm. They've been consciously created over eons and of great beauty and stained glass windows and incense and all this wonderful things. That space is very different. So, um, uh, so my paper does have uh, those, um, the picture of the relic tour. And so they will get the essence of it when you gaze at the picture. Yes. And in fact, the science reviewers, because went through a peer review process, it's very interesting. The scientist said, well, the author gives us the framework of why these things would work. And for the first time, we have something. And I recommend publishing this work. And I really love that photograph. It should be. <laughs> and so, yeah. And, you know, this is for, for the journal editors. The, yeah, the, they included it. So, um, and for me, I offer it to the readers or listeners and people, the readers of the book that go here, get that paper. It's your gift and you can go to it again and again and go to that picture mm. so, of the relic tour. Yeah. 
Awesome. Well, actually, when I when I went to your website and signed up, so it's on it's on route to my email right now. Yay. Um, Okay. Uh, thank you so much. I'm I'm so excited to get into your book, and I appreciate your work. Work it's really fascinating, and I'm so grateful you referenced the life and teachings of the masters of the Far East because not a lot of people have read those books, and they're mind blowing. And when you read the words, just even if it's made up, you you just can't. Which I don't think it is because not made up. How do you how do you write those beautiful sentences? Right? How I don't care if you would say it's like a little monkey in a fairy tale, the sentences are amazing, right? That's to structure those and they, words. And they grab you, don't they? They grab yeah. your heart. It's, something it's, you, can, you know you're reading something very profound. You know what I mean? It's like, whoa, that's some You know, we truth. need to bring these classics back out. And mm, you know, mm. uh, it's been buried for a long time. I think, it would, like I say, it was published in 1911 or something like that. But yep. it's in publication. Um and, you know, I asked um, a very revered teacher, and he's of the lineage of Yogananda. He's come from Swami Rama. Swami Rama's lineage and Yogananda's lineage go to Babaji and go to Shiva. Okay, these are all unbroken. And so I asked him about Spalding's book, actually, and he went, oh, that is the truth. He speaks the truth. And he did this to me, and I went, whoa, okay, because that was... <laughs> I was casually talking to my brother. Remember those books by Spalding that we've read? So I've read like Tyrone and like you, we are reading, we're seekers. Mm -hmm. And then when we know the truth, you cannot let go. It's like Tiller's paper. I knew something was the truth. I couldn't understand it. So I contacted him. And lo and behold, he says, okay, but you have to meditate first, like Tyrone. Mm. Ask Tyrone, just sit with yourself, Matthew. That's the first thing. And if you feel you're uh, being bounced around, that's what the mind is supposed to do. Don't try to stop it. But mm. don't get attached to every thought flying through. Mm. Anchoring your breath. It's the first thing you can do. And Bhagavan Krishna says this to Arjun in the Gita. Mm. Just sit with your mind. Hey, dude, you're being disturbed by this word. Don't worry about that. <laughs> but go after the truth and make no mistake because the mind follows you like the shadow. Hmm. But at least know for what it is and don't fall victim to the bouncing around. So Krishna is saying to his own friend and Buddha is saying to us, just stay still, sit down, breathe. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah, that's another really great book, the, the Bhagavad Gita. I remember that being like, whoa, this is a – this is a high level. It's not an easy read. <laughs> it's reading very slow, um, but it's very beautiful. Song. It's a very song. Gita, it, Gita is mm. the song of God. Yes. Mm. So uh, it's one of my, um, right now I'm studying it again. There are many translations out there. So I'm, and there'll be new books. One of the books I'm actually writing right now, Matthew, is when Tiller was imprinting from the deep meditative state, and I've been through these sessions a couple of times. There's no question. The space immediately starts to feel really, oh, my God, okay? Mm. You feel refreshed. You come out and you think, whoa, what was that about? And Tiller says, you know, um, I'm being assisted by the great unseen. He kept on saying that. And so I asked him, what is this unseen? And he gave me three names. He told me this, this, and this. And I went, oh. And I didn't pay attention to it. I, they were not familiar to me. Now that Bridging Science and Spirit has been published, I realized I have to go there and explore the relationship, what it looks like for the divine and man. How does this relationship look like? What is the receptivity of man? How's the, how does the divine show up? And how, do you, how are you receptive to that and the data that comes out of it? Because Tiller could have missed it. You could admit science. What makes you think that divine is just in a temple or a synagogue or a church? Mm -hmm. Can it not be in a physics lab or a clinic? Why, does, why cannot this omnipresent, omnipotent essence be anywhere? And so Tiller has shown me again that it can be in the home. It can be in the physics. It can be just about just about any it, it's just there's no separation non-duality advaita 
is now coming really more tangibly than ever before. And so in the second book, I go into what does that look like and what was the things that Tiller did, even in his daily practice, that made this mind so supreme. You know, I mean, really, when I met him in that dinner, it was so obvious. I was scared of meeting this man. I was terrified because I, I, you know, I was just a doctor. I didn't know quite what questions because the paper was so difficult. But yet I met this man who was fun, loving, um, open, and I felt very accepted and loved in that dinner. I'll never forget that dinner meeting. And I write a little bit about it in the introduction. So um, Tiller is showing us the way that, you know, we have to leave this electromagnetic world now. We're much, and we have to stop feeling addicted to feeling good. Mm. <laughs> you know, we have to do serious work, not candy stuff and give me a like on Facebook. Okay, okay, enough of that. We have to go further. We are poised. And I think this is almost like a reset button. This pandemic or the civil unrest, we must look at our behaviors and go forth. We're ready. And we don't have to create new stuff. It's already there for us. The mystics have said it again and again and again. The truth is there free. When you need workshops, you, don't need, you just, we've talked about it here. Breathe, sit down. Be like Tyra and get some, somebody can get you the food. <laughs> be serious. Be serious about it. And it'll bear fruit. It'll bear fruit. And very fast. 100 days, your friend, something shifted. Mm -hmm. What makes you think you have to go to the Himalayas? No. You, and you know what? The householder is the perfect because relationships is where you're testing it out. Mm your own self and then relationships iris your your significant other and then you you know circles ever going out wider but relationships you are already you're reflecting your inner um understanding hmm. and that's where you you can't hate these people because they're asleep they're fast asleep that's all and so they're playing the victim role I need this, therefore, you did this, therefore, this happened, therefore. So we think of injustices. I'm not making small of that, believe me, but I think we come from a, a position of, I'm going to choose this. My response will be choosing the way of, you know, Master Jesus. Give, on, give unto Caesar this, but I the soul of man is, is my responsibility. So you take charge. So you don't blame and you, yeah. Mm. I think Jesus was just, uh, I'm not Christian, but boy, what a, what a teacher, you know? And there's a lot of St. Matthew, St. John in my book, Psalm 104. Right now for this month, I'm contemplating Psalm 91. So, for me, it's very real. I don't, see, I don't see separation between the great faiths of the world. I've studied Buddha. I write about him. Uh, Jesus, he's in my book. Lord Shiva, Yogananda's in my book. Padre Pio of Italy shows up in my book. So there are all these essences of divinity that come, and you go, thank you. You know, you say thank you to them because they support you. Mm. They support us in our life now. They're very alive. And um, you, you, at least I do in my prayers, say thank you to the great ones. And may I speak the truth as I understand it and write the truth as I understand it in, in the next book. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I love it. Well, I'm glad you're out there uh, sharing your work and, and committing to the path and, and sharing it with others so I can learn and um, apply it. And, uh, and it's helpful because sometimes I go down the, the dark rabbit holes and it's not a good place to stay. So it's a reminder to, um, you know, remember these practices and these teachings, especially in challenging times. And that's actually why I really like the Bhagavad Gita because he's in the middle of war in my archetype is warrior martial artist and so i consider those things and it's how i kind of 
analyze the world and, and how I contribute to it. So I love that example. So, um, well, thank you so much for your time and your work. I definitely invite everybody to check out your website to download uh, that PDF or you can get for free the study. And um, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> good night for now. Yeah, good night for now. We'll see you again. Thanks, guys. So, so Matthew, I hope I didn't say anything. Oh, wait. Like, oh, no, no, you're good. You're good. I'll, I'll stop it now. But yeah, no, we'll, we'll chat in a second. Thanks. Thanks guys for watching. Peace. Sorry. <laughs>